So, um, quick little uh, explanation of uh, using OAuth to authenticate a user in SAP NetWeaver Cloud. So, um, I want to authenticate a given user to my application. So, if I start off, first thing I have is my application. Now, uh, next thing I need, obviously, is a user. Now, if my user is going to access my application, I, I want to know who they are. Um, and I want to be able to trust who they are. So the, the traditional way of doing this is using a username password. So the user enters a password, and my application stores a list of hashed passwords, and I check, is it the same? Yes, good, OK, allow the user in. Now, uh, if I were to do this, I'm going to have to, one, I'm going to have to build all that password storage. I'm going to have to hope like hell that my user is actually going to remember the password. I'm probably going to have to build some sort of password retrieval reset logic in there as well. Now, all of these things have been done before, and, and really there is no need to do that anymore. Um, so what I'm going to offer is, for my users is a much more uh, uh, friendly uh, a easy way for them to log into my application. So I'm going to allow them to log in with their favorite social network. So um, the three use cases that I'm using are uh, Twitter, um, Facebook, and Google. So um, if you don't have a, one of those three uh, social media accounts, then you know, goodness help you, and welcome to the 21st century. So anyway, in, in, in my particular example, a user is actually um, trying to connect to the application. So at this point, I have no idea who this user is. So what my application does is it redirects them to a uh, login page and says, hey, um, user, what you're going to need to do is actually log in with um, one of these three um, uh, social networks. Now, um, what happens is that all of those three social networks, that's Google, Facebook, and Twitter, offer this um, solution, which is called OAuth. Now, um, OAuth allows you to access um, certain um, components of the application without having to disclose the user's um, password. So rather than you know me as the application needing to know the user's password for Google, I can just have a little token which says uh, Chris's application is allowed to read. And this is the good bit about OAuth. It says this particular bit of information. So uh, for Twitter, for example, I may only be allowed to read your tweets but not do any tweeting for you. Now that's the, the case that we've set up here. Um, and in Google, um, I say that, uh, that the scope, the application scope, is that um, I can read your email address. Not particularly privacy challenging, I hope. Um, and in Facebook, that I can read some basic information like your name. Um, and uh, what do I have for Twitter? Twitter, I think that I can read your your posts. Um, I don't think I can even read your DMs. So there you go. That's you know, I could do that anyway if I were just to look at your um, page. So it's not particularly. Uh, the idea is that I'm not trying to read anything from the actual uh, from Google, Facebook, or Twitter that I couldn't access anyway um, through normal public means. But what it does mean is that I'm going to be able to authenticate that you are who you actually say you are on those things. So. Next step, application uh, says to the user, hey, you're going to have to log in. Now, between the application and the OAuth provider, let's say we'll just use the case of Twitter, we've pre-shared a secret. Now, this particular secret and application ID allows Twitter to know that um, I am uh, Chris's app, so it's that Chris's app is requesting this particular authentication, um, but it also allows um, me to sign the application so that um, nothing else can pretend to be Chris's app, um, but it's only uh, Chris's app. So I'll sign the, the redirect that's going to the OAuth provider and say, hey, I want you to 
um, authenticate this particular user um, for my application. So the user is then um, directed to the OAuth provider's website. Now this is not my website, this is the OAuth provider's website. So we're going onto the Twitter website and it will come up and say, you know, uh, Chris's app is requesting access to read your tweets. Yeah, and then that's quite important. So it's only it specifies the level of access that I'm um, requesting. So it should be very clear to the user what level of access they are um, granting me. So then the OAuth provider then uh, verifies the user's um, username and password. It may be that they're already logged into Twitter and, they, and then they don't actually need to enter their username and password. Um, but it verifies their username and password and says, OK, right, I'm going to uh, allow Chris access to read your tweets, or Chris's app, rather. So what it does then is it redirects from the, the Twitter website, or the OAuth provider's website, back to my application. So, and passes through um, the application um, uh, a, a token. So it, it, what it does is, yeah, it redirects the user and then posts to my application a, a token um, in the string that says, okay, this is uh, Twitter saying that uh, random Joe user um, has authenticated you. Now, at this point, there's, you know, I how do I, I, as the application, this user here could just be spoofing all this traffic. They could be not actually authenticating here and, and just coming back with this right redirection. So what I do is I then use this token, and as the application, you know, separate from the user interactions, I then talk to the OAuth provider and say, hey, I've got this token back, um, and it, it purports to be coming from Joe user. Um, is it? And the OAuth provider says, hell yes, that's Joe user, yeah, and here's some information about Joe user. And I go, oh, awesome. Right, now I know that uh, Joe user is who they s say they are, um, as far as Twitter is concerned anyway, and therefore I can authenticate them. And, you know, I'm going to assume that you're, you haven't actually told anyone else your Twitter password or whatever, in which case, well, then that's you know, your security failing and not mine. So there we go. Um, but at that point, I now know who exactly who you are. So I generate a um, session cookie. Um, which is valid for the lifetime of that user's browser session. Um, I mean, obviously, they could capture it and be malicious about it and someone else could steal it, but, I mean, that's pretty much how web security works most of the time these days anyway. You have to rely on that level of security. Um, by the way, all these communications between the application, um, my application, the user, and the OAuth provider are all running over HTTPS. So in theory, unless you're the NSA, you shouldn't be able to read them particularly quickly anyway. So session cookies only valid for a limited time. My application keeps a cache of that cookie ID and then allows the user to log in using that cookie from then on, and then I'm authenticating them. I can also do some cool stuff because I've got their... Uh, the access to auth provider so I can bring up their profile picture and I can bring up their um, you know who they are on Twitter and show that in the top and say this is who you're logged in as so um, and then then from that point onwards I can treat my user as uh, an authenticated user of the platform and I just check on every interaction that I have between the user and my application I just check to see that that session cookie is valid and if it isn't well, then I obviously redirect them back through the whole authentication loop. So um, that's how I used OAuth to authenticate a user in SAP NetWeaver Cloud.